Hi, this is Imran from itradeaims.com. I have received a few questions from a friend in Indonesia. Uh, question number one is, are the areas that I mark with yellow circle called the break of aims level? And these are the areas where we enter the market. Well, if the setup is confirmed you want to take a trade, then yes, these areas, this aims level here, this here, this here, around here. These are the areas at the break of which we would take a trade. Let me bring my chart. If you see, this is an AIMS level. Now I'd also like to explain that an AIMS level is based on a five candle fractal. Uh, and a fractal is created by the high of any five candles when the middle of that candle has the high or the low. On this occasion this fractal or AIMS level was created by this high of this candle. This um, AIMS level normally will be shown on our screen at the end of this candle, not at the end of this candle. What we need to have for a fractal is to have five candles, let's say one, two, three, four, five, and on this occasion the high of the middle fan uh, the middle candle to be higher than the highs of two candles to the left and two candles to the right. So obviously uh, at the end of this candle we would have received or this AIMS level would have been printed as grey. If you look at this level, at the end of this candle this would have been confirmed. Now I'd also like to add is that um, this indicator is designed that at the end of this candle it will show an AIMS level already but we must be careful this is a tentative AIMS level we must wait for one more candle to finish so this is this would be the second fractal to the right of this candle and this was based this level was based on one two three four five these five candles this is the high this is the middle candle and the high of this candle is higher than the one to the left and two to the left and it was also h higher than the high of this candle and this candle two to the right and then at the end of this candle the computer uh, or MT4 counted that the low of this candle is lower than the two to the left and two to the right so it printed another one here. I have uh, put vertical lines which would be the break of aims this one, this one here, 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 here and here as well. Um, that is your first question. Let me go to the question number two. Okay, question number two. On page 14 on the manual, I suppose you're referring to the ebook, uh, we take our trend direction from the purple line. We shall take setups on M1 as long as we are trading away from the purple line. If you see a setup on M1 but price is moving towards the purple line, you'll be trading against the trend. Do not trade towards the purple line. Okay, so does we trend away from the purple line mean we should avoid getting near the purple line? Hence try to stay away from it as, as far as we can. No, no, no. That is not the concept or we should trend in harmony with it, hence following where it goes in parallel. Yep, the later is true. Let me bring my chart. Um, on this chart, let me bring M5. There's a better example. Right. You can see here that the alligator is asleep and price is going sideways. If you were to break of, take a break of aims around this area or this area, know that you are going towards purple line. This trade, although it is above the aims levels, if, if it was to go up, it did not go up, but if it did go up, this would be towards the purple line. And this one, on the, on the contrary, when it broke out below, was going away from purple line. Uh, 
this was a perfect trade uh, if you look at it, a perfect setup this was a perfect setup let's say alligator was asleep this was also a perfect setup around here as you can see alligator is asleep if you took a break of this is a good example now towards purple if you went this way and you're going towards purple know it that you are actually going against the trend and if you just look, look use common sense you would see that prices went down peaked here and now coming back for a retrace so taking this trade is actually going against the trend and the purple helps you not to take it and usually it bounces around this but when it went sideways it bounced against and came here did not continue what we do uh, how we count our waves is that we say okay this is where AO created a peak and then another peak which was lower this is nothing to do with divergence at the moment and price is going up and when it crosses and turns green we say this is the confirmation that we are in a corrective wave of this impulse wave down others some would say this was the third wave now alligator when it sleeps it's in a corrective wave and when it opens it's in an impulse wave so here alligator slept again so we were in a corrective wave hoping that there will be another uh, impulse wave to the downside rather to the up but when it sets up and the purple is also intertwined with all these lines then we say okay we don't care now and probably it will break out as well so let's suppose this purple was here and this alligator was here and this did not break out and we could have gone up here and short here but looking at the angle of purple and the way you know and the peak of AO the direction of the peak of AO we will be biased towards going short so this will be your short here and the long if you took it around here would also be correct but know it that although your breakout was just close to the purple and just above the purple but the purple itself is actually above these lines although the price broke out above and purple is closed and the entry would be going away from purple look if it went this way if the trend went then it would be away from purple but the purple itself was a bit too early it was still below um, basically above the line so if this purple was around this area or somewhere around here then we don't care we would go up a short depending and taking care of the range onto the left as you can see if you, you make your entry here this is your worry point and this is your worry point if you if you took it short although this is your worry point but this is a bit o away from you in a, in a way that uh, it has spent some time going sideways so when you entered here your most important point to worry about would be this because this is where it created the low but there's another point here that by the time you entered and it will come here it's 26 pips away so if you were 26 pips in profit by the time you entered and that's 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 good you already be in profit so if it's more than 10 pips from your entry and then it's okay you would have taken that let me bring that question again uh, yep and that's what it is um, around here it's a very good example let's say if you were going long here you're going towards purple and know it that you are going against the trend now the trend being alligator open to the downside once and AO peaked and when it comes back to the alligator's mouth it is the corrective wave and what follows an impulse corrective is another impulse now here we had a peak here so we were thinking that maybe the next one might not go that far and had it diverged like it did around here we'd say we have lost momentum red bars meant momentum is strong the dark bars meant momentum is now losing and when it came down again price did create a new low but the AO did not create a new low this is divergence and divergence tells you that we have lost momentum and we probably will go back to another corrective wave and we did exactly that it did into a corrective wave it went back to alligator's mouth we do not trade into the alligator's mouth we always want to go away from alligator's mouth we want to trade away from purple now I'd like to also add that the purple is the red line of the five times high time frame and I would like to actually prove it in a way um, this is how I do it I'm just gonna change the color of this line to blue this I'm going to put a vertical line here a uh, horizontal line here 
property, this intersection should be somewhere around the red line on M5. And I'm just going to change the time frame. And the intersection, as you can see, the intersection of the blue line and the gray line is somewhere around red. So this shows, without looking on, M on M1, we can tell uh, where where are we? Where is price in um, in relation to the red line of the higher time frame? So if your alligator itself is away from the purple line, that means that price on the higher time frame is away from the red line, which means that the higher time frame is trending, as you can see here. Now in this um, these vertical lines, I'm going to bring you back to it. A very interesting because. <clears throat> If you see, if you look at this chart, we have price coming down, going up, down, up. This is what we call a range-bound market, right? Oh, let me just add this gray line then represents the purple of M5. See, if you want to know where the purple of M5 is, then we use the gray line. For example, let me bring this here. Um, I'm actually going to bring it to this zone here. Okay, this is the blue line. Now this intersection is the is the purple. This is the purple of M5. Now let's see if of if our gray will depict the purple of M5 on M1. Okie dokie. As you can see, the intersection is roughly around here. Now, this is not exact multiple. It is uh, another fib number that we are based. So this gray roughly shows us that this is the area where the purple of M5 is. Right? This is the whole concept for this. So I'm just going to delete uh, the blue and the horizontal gray line. OK, now let me show you. This is the area where a lot of people will uh, end up giving a lot of rents by going long here and going long here and then closing and all that. The area that we should be looking at around this is when you see, let me go to M5, when you see a strong wave like this, as you can see, a peak, there was a peak and then came back to zero line and then peaked again and diverged you know that the market can sell only so much you know they can't just sell 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 so it kind of moved around 130 pips down now it's time for price to go sideways and price did go sideways but we become more interested when these levels between a lower aims level on M5 or upper there this range tightens so when this range tightens and around this area the range was only 15 pips we do two important things. One is that we do not trade inside a tight range on M1 because it's too vulnerable to uh, whip saws or whip lashes. Right? You have this. Um, let me put some horizontal lines to mark the uh, the range of that we had on M5. And if I go down on M1 now. You see those vertical lines give us a guide where we were. And as you can see, this, these are the levels of M5 range. You see it comes to it, goes up, bounces, comes down, bounces. These are the areas where we'll be interested to take shorts below this zone. And we can do that by just looking at M5. So if you were to go anywhere short around this area and this area and this area, you're actually uh, in a tight range. So um, if we take an entry on M1, we should make sure that we are outside the range because we are already aware that there was a strong wave already and now price is going sideways and it's in a fourth wave of M5. Uh, fourth wave of M5 because there's a simple way of doing that. We see uh, an alligator open, a strong wave, up again, down again, peak, divergence, and when it crosses the zero line, we say now it is confirmed that we are in a corrective wave. We would like now price to go sideways and form a tight aims level with alligator sleeping and it did that 
and you would go short here. If you went long, you'll be going against the purple and that would not be recommended. So we'd be biased towards going short and if you did go short, it would have turned into a nice trade. Although I did not trade it because of the unusual trading hours on Friday, seven o'clock. Uh, not a good time, but this week was an unusual week. Almost every day price um, started moving around uh, seven o'clock UK, uh, somewhere near the New York um, uh, closing. Uh, you know, it just keeps changing, but we have to trade within our hours. And if you have, you know, you're always on, uh, in front of the screen and stuff you want to trade, there's no, nothing wrong with trading it. But best is to trade around the uh, open times, uh, New York Open, um, London Open, Asian Open. And the close times are also good. So let me bring that question again. I hope it answered those. And let me go to question number three. We have the red dot, okay, we have the red dot. Conditions are met. Uh, well, yeah, alligator's asleep. Gray is inside, even, oh, gray is inside, purple. Now let me talk about the gray as well. The gray is the purple of uh, M5. And if you have all of this together, it is an opportunity for trading. But at the same time, we have to be careful that if everything is going sideways, then you know, when the gray is inside and the purple and all the stuff, then that means market is really going sideways and we have to trade breakouts and breakout has to be traded from the outermost uh, fractals. But at the same time, when we choose the outermost fractals, we, we don't want them to be too far away from our lines. For example, let me bring uh, go to the other chart. So let's say if this was the outermost fractal and if I had put a pending here, you know, below this AIMS level, and if it was to trigger me here, I'd be 15 pips late from the first fractal, uh, for the, from the first break of fractal out of the sleeping alligator's mouth. And now, talking about that, let me talk about this as well. What is the first, uh, what is the break of the first fractal out of the alligator's, sleeping alligator's mouth? Now let's say if this is sleeping alligator, and this breakout here is actually the first breakout it's the breakout of the first fractal or first aims level outside the alligator's mouth this is what we this is how we count or uh, let's say the life cycle of a, of a wave or a trend so this is the first and in this occasion this comes the second now by the time the second comes it's gone quite considerable amount of pips most of the time setup two would be things like and there's a good example in M1 for setup two from this range. So when this aim, this candle broke out, out of this AIMS level, this is the breakout, the first break of the first fractal out of the sleeping alligator's mouth, but this one was the second break of a fractal outside the alligator's mouth. And by the time, most of the time when it breaks below the second fractal, the alligator's already open. And when the alligator's open and breaks, that is set up too. But if you call this setup two, this is not setup two because this has traveled considerably. And if you can see, the alligator has been open for quite some time. So, and the by the time you come here, the AO would clearly tell you that this is not a, a high probability entry. Like for example, here, if you enter, you would see that AO has peaked and it's going back to zero line, telling you that the momentum has died. So if you take any entry here, you have to know that the thing actually started from here. So you're too late. If you were to go long around this area, one, the alligator's not sleep properly. We have the blue dot and the fresh aims. Um, and AO is close to zero line, but you should know that price trended this way and this is a retrace. So, uh, And we don't want to trade retrace and the purple helps us with this. So if you go long here, you're going towards purple uh, and that is going towards, um, that's actually trading the corrective waves and we don't take to corrective waves. We do not trade reversal and we do not trade uh, corrective waves and the purple helps us with that. The all purple also helps us that we do not trade against the trend of 5x, uh, five times higher time frame. Okay. So um, he says, Am I on the right track at this point? If so, then when and where exactly do we put our buy sell stop? In Bill Williams book, it is very clear where we should put our buy sell stop. In your version, I don't understand where and when we should put 
the buy stop. Please forgive my incompetence. Well, there's nothing um, to ask forgiveness, so there's no incompetence. Every, it's, um, I'm very thankful to you for asking the question. And I thought um, I'll take some time out and answer it. Could you please explain a little bit in detail? Could you please help me by making it on this chart? Oh, well, we have made a video about it, and I hope you like it. Um, well, the entries are always taken uh, above or below. Bring the chart. Let me bring it here. Okay, around here. Nice, lovely setup. Uh, everything is set. And we have, a, let's say we have a red dot. Alligator's asleep. Price has not yet broken outside any M's level after it slept. Right? It has not successfully broken. So the first breakout happened around here. Uh, when this AIMS level was formed and alligator was asleep and you wanted to trade, what you do is that you will, uh, the price is 1.3535, I would say go put a pending around 3.4 or 3.3. So one pip below AIMS level or two pip below AIMS level. In the case of going long, let me see, around here for example, alligator is asleep, purple is inside, perfect, AO is close to zero line, and this is your AIMS, fresh AIMS level, <coughs> this is your potential uh, resistance point, uh, about three pips away. If you wanted to take this fractal, you would say one pip plus the spread. My spread is 1.6. Anybody on an Alpari micro or classic account will have 1.6 spread. So let's round it to two and plus one, so three pips. So what I'll do is that I will count three pips up there, and that is one point. So the price is 1.3535. Look, it's the same price. And add 3 to it, so 1.3538. I'll put pending here, which would have been triggered on this candle. And we would have straight and stayed long in this all the way either here or even up here, depending on how you trade it. And so, yes, um, it's very clear here as well. Uh, you trade the AIMS level. So one pip below, three pips above when it's a setup. Question number four. We'll assume that the purple line was not in the Ames area uh, when alligator's mouth opened and that it was below Ames area. Hmm. Uh, what trade should we trade, long or short? Oh, you mean around this area. If, if you mean around this and this area, let me go to my chart and see what you mean. Okay, what you mean to say here is that if alligator was asleep, let's say it wasn't really properly asleep, it was asleep around here. Uh, the AIMS level up there was too far away. Uh, but let's say if you were to take this AIMS level here, uh, now you know that this is any AIMS, any break of AIMS around here, this would be towards purple. So <clears throat> when purple is above the AIMS levels and above the alligator, and it's going this way and the alligator's line like this then going towards purple if you took a trade this would be going towards purple would mean you're going against the trend so if you took this setup this would be not only going away from purple but also away from the alligator's mouth and away from the break of fractal so we must focus on the first breakout of the first fractal out of a sleeping alligator's mouth like I explained so if alligator was sleep here this was the bre the first breakout of a fractal outside the alligator's mouth, sleeping alligator's mouth, sleeping alligator's mouth. Now, on this occasion, this was the fractal, the first breakout of the fractal out of the alligator's sleeping alligator's mouth, and this one was the second breakout. So around this was set up two, around this it was set up one. Around this, by the time it entered, let's say, if I go eight bars to the right, this was set up two already. So if you were to take this, alligator was already open to the downside. And since you know now that the purple is the red line of the five time higher time frame, then you would see that the alligator on the higher time frame was also kind of open. And let me put the vertical line here and go to M5. And as you could see, uh, on M5, by looking at the purple, which was this red line, we had some kind of idea that alligator on the long higher time frame was open to the downside so we were going with the trend 
and so um, another most important thing that I would like to add here is that when we see that the M5 has a very tight aims range which is only 15 this is where we would use the outermost levels of M5 rather than trade on M1 so um, we'll be very careful about it and we don't want to pay unnecessary rent inside M1 we want to take uh, the trend so in the beginning I would always say that if the alligator on M5 is asleep don't trade M1 uh, don't trade M1 uh, wait for uh, it to come close to the you know outer range and set up somewhere like for example uh, on this occasion I'm gonna put a vertical line on this and go down to M1 so if you were to trade around here inside M1 let's see how it would look see around here if you were to go short you'd be going against purple anyway so the purple would stop you and this is the the area where M5 had created this aims level so if you go short around here you're going inside the the range of M5 but if you went short around this area you you have now gone out of the aims levels uh, on M5 which the blue line is showing us so this is the range but as you can see around this we have quite a high range you know 26 pips up and down so if you went inside M1 aims in the direction of the trend that should be fine but if you went inside aims uh, in this range here and if any setup let me put a horizontal line here to signify this is the this is the midpoint and this is the range let's say these are the this is the range of M5 and I'll just put a vertical line around here so that when we go down to M1 we know where we are 1150 right? Mm. 1150 as you can see uh, I put those horizontal lines those are matching the M5 levels and this horizontal line matching the M5 levels and this is the midpoint and this is that middle uh, horizontal line so as you can see that if you were to take break around here and a break around here or a break around here you know that you are actually too close to the range of M5 which is the support resistance zone so this is the area where we would be careful and we would say we wait for our setups either take um, outermost fractals rather than inner most fractals. The innermost aims levels are these ones, or this one, these ones, and these ones. Outer are these ones, these one, and these one. But um, we make sure that, let's say, we know that this is the zone of M5. So if I were to trade around here, I'd have to see how far am I from my lines. So if I enter around here, I know that my, my red line is 15 pips away from me. That's too big a risk. <clears throat> so every time we make an entry, we want to um, be careful about this that uh, we don't want to trade inside the range we want to trade outside of the range but when we trade outside of the range we at that time also find out how far am I from my potential exit because the dot will be created somewhere when you close it on the green line so if I enter around here now this is the the, the range the lower of the M5 range but if I enter here one is that the candle breakout was here the sorry the aims breakout was here on this candle and by the time I enter I'm actually one two three four candles late and also around six pips late and at the same time this price level from this red line or this red line here is too far so if it was to reverse and close me then it would be a, a bigger loss so we, we are careful around this zone if you wanted to go short uh, you'd say that if you went short here my my potential exit point was not too far away from me right it was only five pips because the red line is there but at the same time when I when I take a short here I'd see that I have a relevant aims level just one pip away from me and another one just five pips away from me so if I take this I know that my stop loss should be on the other side of aims around here and that would be 10 pips but my exit could potentially come around five pips so this is only a five pip risk so if you took this for example you took a minus five rent if you gave it another try then you had a successful trade um, I thought I'll do a five minute video but uh, it took about nearly half an hour I hope it was helpful and I hope it answered all your questions if not send me another one <laughs> thank you for watching